Jamal from Jersey. He's a regular caller. Jamal, what's going on, man? What's up? How you doing today, uh, fellas and Alan? Good, man. What's up? I'm wondering what you think about the same old Knicks narrative that is Dolan and this, this, that, and above. My opinion is when you're a perennial loser year in and year out, media and everybody else that, you know, has to do their job, just focus on the negative, and that's and it's easy to say Dolan this and Dolan that. And we have so much internal conflict in the building, like with Phil having his own journalist he wanted to get yeah. stuff out to and Right. People just leaking things for yep. specific and personal reasons. And with this regime, I feel like it's different. It's more cohesion. And I think the Porzingis unfortunate situation is the example of that because there's no way he could have gotten that trouble and we not hear about it until he's out of the building as a Nick. And that should tell you something, you know, that part of it there is that, you know, that – that incident that, that KP was a part of, and there, and I know of two other things that never got out about him that'll never get out. Mm. Um, mm. But, you know, they protected him. That's why when people talk about how the Knicks failed Porzingis, you know, I, I feel like it was a failure, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I said it when he, they traded him that it was a terrible day, that it had to come to this, that he didn't want to stay and they couldn't convince him to stay. So everybody failed. His brother failed him. Mm. You know, as the way they, they were guiding Maybe him. Maybe bad was guidance. Bad, bad guidance. The kid, the, the kid was immature about a lot of things. And he also didn't recognize that the team did do all it could, all they could to take care of him. They really mm. did. And was he what, what he wasn't happy about, he's never talked about it yet. Mm. He will have hopefully eventually. My question do, is do you think it was the do you, do you think it was the fill the whole fill tenure? Yes, that, I, I think it. I think it started there. The mistrust began there. It, it continued there, and and I don't think they ever were able to. And I know Fizz tried it. I know Perry tried it. They were never able to just get him back in the fold. And he went from the kid mm. who was like, "Oh, I have this key to the gym, and I can go to the gym anytime I want. I love that." Mm. To, you know, sliding into DMs and hanging out a little more than he should, and mm. and also you know basically side eyeing everybody that tried to talk to him about how much he meant to the franchise. So. You know, but all that aside, all right, all that aside, what, what you just talked about is something that, that I often talk about on my radio show. And that is, is that when you're a fan of a team like like the Knicks, like the Jets, you know, the Mets deal with this as well. And you get that same old blank. You got to understand that that's not going to change. You can't you can't get angry at it. You can't get frustrated by it. If you're a team, you also can't let it uh, dictate what you do. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. make decisions based on. Oh, the media is going to kill us. Yep. You make a decision that's best for your business and mm. move forward. And that narrative goes away when you start winning. winning. When you start producing, when you start showing that you're heading in the right direction. Gotta Let me win, tell you a story man. about the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors were a laughing stock franchise, believe it or not. Yep. They had Monte years. Ellis. Out there. <laughs> they, they had Monte Ellis. They drafted Steph Curry, and no one there wanted them to draft Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Then Curry got the ankle injury. Then they gave him the extension, and they traded Monte Ellis. They had a, a night where they were honoring Chris Mullen, and the, and the owner came out. The same owner who's there now that everybody loves. The owner comes out, and he was booed mm. by the crowd mm. to a point where, um, who was it? Rick Barry grabbed the mic and scolded the fans. Oh, saying, this right. is yeah. not about yeah. that. This is about Chris Mullen, and you should honor Chris Mullen. Now, just understand that they had to prove that they knew what they were doing. They were heading in the right direction, and it took them time to get there. And obviously, once they did, it turned into something spectacular. The point I'm making is, is that nothing ever changes overnight when you're a franchise that has lost as long as a team like the Knicks have lost. That team, people will expect you to fail until you prove you can consistently succeed. So with that in mind, when you're a fan and you see – that no one's believing in your team. What do you want them to believe in? There's no yeah. history to believe in it. And I'll, I'll quote Steve Mills last year. You have a reason to be skeptical. <laughs> he even said it himself. Yeah. You have a reason to be skeptical. And they know that. So it's this is about get your head down. And you have to, as a franchise, plow through this stuff. Take all the arrows. Go ahead. Say what you're going to say about us. Until you start winning. Until you start proving that your plan True. is working. Then you'll start getting the accolades. But people aren't going to say, oh, I like what they're doing. I'm going to believe in them. No, because we've had that before. You've yeah. seen those moments before where I'm going to believe in them now. Nope, that was bad. Believe in them now. Nope, <laughs> believe in them now. Nope. <laughs>
<laughs> so after a while, right? If we, I mean, how many times you're going to bang your head into the wall, hoping that the wall falls down, you're going to stop. Yeah. So that's where you're at now as a franchise. That's where you're at as a fan base. You just have to understand it, block out the noise and hope this time they get it right. True indeed, man. Yeah.